Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Assistant Editor Premiere Pro video course. My name is Christian Rush. I'm an assistant editor from Boy Wonder Productions in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm looking forward to helping you guys sort of understand something that I was trying to understand for a very long time and I didn't really get to get um, like good instructions until I paid for a really expensive course. And then most of my learning happened when I got hired and I was very fortunate to meet some people who were willing to take in somebody like me who had a basic understanding, but really had a whole lot to learn. And I'm hoping that this course is going to boost your learning. And when you do get into the door and you start working, you will be a little further than I was. So first thing I want to explain is just a little bit about the footage we're going to be working on. This is from a show called Rescue My Renovation from 2014. And um, basically, it's just like a house flipping renovation show. Um, and all we're going to be doing is creating what I do more or less every day um, on a normal basis for the editors. That is besides restarting their computer when they don't understand what's working. So. Let's get started. What I have here is actually a template that we use um, at work. And it has basically everything that we want in it, but I'd really, really like to, and I hope you won't get pissed. I want to make everything from start. So we do have templates and I'll maybe might make it available for download, but it if we create something from scratch, you'll have a much better understanding of why certain multicam settings are the way they are and things like that. So I'm just going to start off with opening Premiere Pro. Trust me, it would be a whole lot easier for me to make a tutorial based off the template. So I would love to, but you should really understand uh, your roots, basically. So I'm going to start by opening Premiere and I'm going to click new project. I'm just going to create something on my desktop. Typically we have like a server where our projects go. I'm going to start just on my desktop and I have here, like I said, the show is called rescue my renovation. So I have here on my desktop, just a little RMR folder. So that's the show code RMR rescue my renovation. We have other shows, first time flippers, FTF, etc. And I have a little projects thing here and I'm just going to create a new, um, sorry, select the folder and then we select the, uh, the name. So just go to projects. Double click it and then click select folder. So now we have it here in RMR slash projects. And what we do is we basically name our projects for the day masters, at least by the show code. So RMR and then the season and episode number. So let's just say this is 101, right? So season one, episode one, it's not, but we're just going to do that for the sake. Then we're going to put the, um, we sort of have like a different way of naming things. So if you ever look like on TV and they have let's say Daredevil, or if you're on Netflix, they all have their episode titles. We basically don't choose our episode episode titles, sorry, until the very end when we understand the characters better. So we currently name it by like the street name that the, the uh, house is being worked on. So I'll just choose a common one called Davis. And then we want to do the day. So let's just say this is day 04. I'm going to say that because it's one of the, the later days. It's definitely not the first one. And then we're just going to put the date. So we put the date based on the date it was shot. And what we do is we do the last two digits of, of the years, 2014, June 1st. So 140701. And we're just going to do that. And the reason we do the day now, uh, the date like this is you don't do it based on the date that you're creating the project because what if you work on five episodes in one or five days for an episode in one day you're going to get pretty mixed up even though that's what here it is for backup the day 04 you still want to just keep it the day it was shot so click ok so um i'm not going to go over the basics of premiere that's probably something that could be explained in better timing in another tutorial uh, Adobe themselves have some pretty good tutorials just for the basics. Um, you should have basically a, a somewhat of an understanding of Premiere coming into this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create my first bin. That's control B. I'm just going to call it RMR 101 day 04. 
And that's just so that when I import it later into my master edit, which you can see here, I have another template, this is basically what the editor works off of. So assistant editors usually work off of, in Premiere at least, they work off of a, a day project. And then the editor has one project that has all of those day projects in one. And then he has like his own sequences and things like that. So let's get started. So usually what we do at work is we have several um, basic bins that we always make sure in there. So I'm just going to start off with our scenes bin. So sorry, I named that 01 scenes. And then I create another bin, 02 interviews. And make sure when you are creating these bins that you are selected here on the, the root. Otherwise, it puts bins inside of like that. We don't want that yet. 03 B roll. 04 source footage, which is going to be the first thing that we're going to be going into. And then day master 05. And then just for good measure, I always make a little junk folder just in case I find something. So the way to import footage for on Windows that's the most efficient is using the media browser. So I already located my footage earlier. So I go to my my hard drive. And I'm just going to go down to where my footage is. And here it all is. I just select all of it. And I click and drag it into my source footage. It's going to take a few seconds to import. And then a little box is going to pop up. So I'm just going to speed through this real quick. OK. so. We have a little thing called a file import failure here, and this is totally okay, totally normal, totally fine. So basically, just click OK. What happens is basically if I show you into the footage, this is shot on a typical Sony F3. Um, when you go into the folder, here's where the clips are in the folders, and then here's the actual like MP4. And then there's all these extra little files like the XMLs, SMIs, all this extra junk. And basically Premiere sees that and says, hey, just so you know, this can't go in there. What we're going to do first is we're going to create auto sequences. So if you are maybe coming from Avid, you've heard of auto sequence. It basically lays out for you on your timeline uh, all the clips from one card. So we have A01, which means that it is camera A card one. So this is pretty typical in just about any kind of shoot, documentary, reality TV, episodic, uh, scripted, anything pretty much is going to more or less be laid out this way. So when I expand that, we have our clip folder and we don't need that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all my clips. I'm just going to drag them to the root of AO1 and I'm just going to delete that clip folder. Now what we're going to do is Premiere doesn't really have an auto sequence function in which, as you can see, here's our media start. It started at 9.59 a.m., 10.03 a.m. It's all laid out basically exactly to the frame or the second of how it was actually shot that day. What you can do is you can do right click, create multicam source sequence. And you might be thinking, whoa, 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 hang on. That's weird. This is just one camera. How can that be a multicam? Well, basically, the multicam function allows you to lay out in a nest. And if you know what Premiere is, you know that a nest is basically just, um, it's sort of like a clip in Premiere, but with other clips inside. So it's like sequence at the same time. It's just Premiere's cool own way of doing it. And then even though this doesn't have other angles in it, you can click this box, create single multicam source sequence. And this is just going to lay it all out on one video layer according to the time code. By default, it's probably going to be set to endpoints. You got to set it to time code. You have to check this box and you have to set this to camera label or camera angle. And then what you want to do is you want to set this to custom so that you can name it. And I'm just going to change it to AO1 so I can keep easy track of it. By default, this is also going to be checked off. Move source clips to process bin. Check that off. I already have mine off. And then just click OK. And it's going to instantly auto sequence pretty much our clips. And if you control double click this, and you, you can't just double click, otherwise you'll here's what happens. It goes into your source monitor. We want to be able to see how it looks in the timeline. So control double click or Mac command double click. And here's all our clips. Now, as you can see there, there are little markers here, and that's because this is, like I said, a very old episode. And they, back in the day, what we used to do is we used to mark on the clips. We don't do that anymore. We do it in the multicam. 
So what we're going to do now is um, basically just repeat that. So I'm just going to speed through this um, one more time. I'll show you for camera AO2. And uh, so select all your clips, drag it out of clip, and then turn it into a multicam by selecting all the clips again. Right click and create multicam source sequence. Make sure time code is checked. This little box here. And then by default, this is already going to be set for you. It's going to remember that and it's going to remember not to keep that checked. And we're going to name it AO2. Control double click and I'm just going to speed through B1 and BO2 until we get to audio and the uh, GoPro camera. Okay, so I'm on the last one now for the main cameras. And just as a heads up, you can always go to edit keyboard shortcuts and you can actually create a shortcut for the create multicam source. So if I just type in create multicam source sequence, there it is on the first one. Um, at work, I work on a Mac and I pretty much just have it set to this. Control Alt M is already used. I'm used to having option as a thing there. So I'll do Control Alt Shift M. That's already be used. Anyways, you can pretty much set it. It's a little easier on a Mac keyboard, I'll admit. I am a PC guy, as you can see at home, but Mac is typically a little more shortcut friendly. Anyways, create multicam source sequence and BO2. So we're done with our main cameras, our A1 and our BO1. Um, sorry, A cam and B cams. Now what we have is our audio and our C cam. And our C cam is typically like a GoPro or a drone. Uh, we usually don't have any more like Sony shoes. Normally we have more than one clip. And what you can do is you can do the same thing for the A cam and B cam. You can select all the clips and um, you can turn it into a multi-cam sequence. The only problem is with GoPros, if you've ever noticed, um, there's usually not time code with GoPros. And if it is, it's usually not correct. So what you have to do is you actually have to go to and watch and either you pray to God that they slated the scene or you really hope that like somebody has a hammer and all the cameras are watching as somebody like hammers something or does something big that you can see and you you sync it by hand and if you're wondering well there's got to be an easier way there there isn't you just you suck it up and you keep moving forward don't try and go looking for other solutions you're going to waste a whole bunch of time so i'm just going to keep this up here um so i can view it later and then i'll just i'll remember that there's a C cam there because I don't have a sequence for it because you cannot just create a a multicam out of one clip. So let's move on to audio though, which is um, something that's a little special. And I'm just gonna get rid of that extra folder, same one for all the others. And if you'll notice, if you select just audio and then right click, you can't do create multi-cam source sequence. So you can't auto sequence it. The reason for that is you can't create uh, a multi-cam source sequence with just audio. It has to have some kind of video in it. So I'm just going to go to my AO2 angle. I'm just going to move the last clip into audio for a little bit. Going to select all those clips. So here's our, our audio. And then here's that one video clip. I'm just going to create multi-cam source sequence because now it's going to let me know that there's a video clip in there. I'm going to name it audio and check off all the other boxes that we normally do. And there we go. So there's our audio, control double click so it goes into here. And just move that clip from AO2 back into the AO2 bin. So now we're all set. We have all our camera angles laid out. And what we're gonna do now is, I'm already noticing right off the bat something wrong with the audio sequence. Now here's a bunch of clips that look to be correct. They all seem to be in the right time code. But whenever you see something starting, whenever a sequence starts from zero, zero, something is wrong. So this clip is out of place. I'm gonna what did play I say, it. Chopin? It was funny, whatever it was. <laughs> it could come out the same. It sounds like it might be an interview. I'm not really sure. But what I'm going to do is I just like to make sure my sequences start with a clip that has time code. So whenever it has a zero, zero time code, it goes to the beginning automatically. So I'm just going to cut it and I'm going to put it at the very end of my sequence. So here, oh, another thing. Uh, in my audio sequence, here's that one clip from AO2. I'm just going to delete that. It's not going to delete it in the bin, so it's fine. I'm just going to paste uh, that one audio clip that started at the zero, 00 time code there. 
And now you can see here, here's probably the first clip. This is actually starting with the correct time code and it starts at 0959. So it started at 959 yeah, AM. So what I'm gonna do is real quick, I'm going to copy that time code and then I'm going to do the hamburger menu here in the sequence for it, start time. I'm just gonna paste that time code. And now we have basically our first clip here and then the actual time code starting correctly here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create an endpoint down to go to the clip, go back one frame, out. So now you can see we zoom in here because if I didn't make the out point where it was, it would start clipping off that clip. So you can see the difference between going back one frame. And I'm just gonna press apostrophe and that's basically the extract shortcut by default. So now our audio sequence is starting at the correct time with the correct clip. And we have that one short little thing at the end all the way down here. And that's just gonna basically remind me, oh yeah, there's something wrong with that clip. I need to match it up manually. And what we're gonna do is now we're gonna create our sync map. And the sync map is one of the most important jobs of the AE and is probably the most important step of doing the whole process. So what we do with our sync map is we have to create a new, um, a new sequence. And it just goes right into the root of our source footage. So I'm gonna do control N or command N. And I have a sync map template here already, but what I wanna do is I just wanna show you from scratch how I made it. So I go into settings, I make this into custom, 23.976. And this is based on what it was shot at. Our A cam and B cam were shot at 23.976. We deliver our show in 60 interlaced or 29.97, um, but you know, 60 interlaced, so it's ha uh, half a frame. So, and then I also by default make this 1920 by 1080. The default for this is square pixels, progressive scan, display. And this is gonna be different for each show that you shoot in. Mainly the, the, um, the time code and I don't know anybody making 4K sequences lately until the last step, but if you're making 4K, you would put those dimensions in there or Ultra HD. And then um, I just keep my sample rate to 48 audio samples. And then some people like to change iframe to QuickTime or something else like that. I just, for the most part, I keep it iframe. Sometimes it gets a little jumbly. And then you would click save preset and that's basically just gonna save everything for you. I'm just gonna click cancel and go back to where my template was. And when you create your template, it'll save right here in custom. I'm just gonna name it sync map. And then I'm gonna do underscore 140701. Click okay. And then what you wanna do is open that sync map and it's gonna basically be just a blank slate for you. What I'm gonna do is now I'm going to see which camera or, or audio starts the first in the whole day. So I'm gonna look for the camera and it's gotta be A01 B01 or audio. It can't be AO2 or BO2 because that's the second card for each camera that was shot with. And then possibly GoPro, but highly doubtful. Um, I'm gonna go to AO1 and I'm gonna press home so that I can see what the first frame is. It starts at 9.59 a.m. and 14, 9.59 a.m. and 14 seconds. BO1 starts at 2 p.m. So 14, 14, 12, that's military time. Uh, the audio starts at, I'm going to click home, 9.59.21. So that's, I think, a little later. Yeah, so this one starts first. So what we're going to do, and pay close attention here if you haven't been already, click Control-A or Command-A on Mac so that everything in here, and make sure the blue bar is surrounding the sequence, Control-A, Command-C. So what I did is I selected all of my clips in A01 and copied them. Now this is gonna sound a little weird, but trust me, it will work. I'm not leading you down a straight path. Click on your time code here, copy it, and then go to your sync map. And your first thought is probably, wait, 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 I just copied all the clips and then I copied the time code. How can I paste something? It's just gonna override with the time code. Premiere can actually remember um, the difference between copying clips and copying time code. So as long as you do it in the following order, it will work fine. What I'm gonna do next is paste the time code into our start time. So we don't want, if you just paste the time code, it's just gonna try and go to it.
what we need to do is you need to change the start time code of your sequence. So the time that your sequence is starting. So you click the hamburger menu on your sync map, start time, and paste that. So now our very first frame is the same as AO1. Now what you can do is you can click paste again, and it's going to paste all of your clips for you. So again, the sequence for that, I'm going to go over it one more time because we have to do this with camera AO2. Let's go to AO2 because I'm just going to do this by the camera angle. So I'm not going to do BO1 yet because it's just a little easier if I just do the same camera angle, one after each other. Control A, Control C. Copy all your clips. Copy your time code. Now don't paste the start time code. Now all you want to do is just paste the time code into your sequence because you don't want to change the start time code again. Now, we got kind of lucky here. The cameraman started recording pretty soon after this last clip because when I pasted the AO2 time code here, it just goes down a few minutes. If the cameraman shoots like two hours later, so let's say they shot at like 1743 or something. Oh, sorry, I didn't do that right. 1743000. It won't go to it because it's too far away. So Premiere will only go forward, I think, 10 minutes or something. So again, I'm just going to paste that. And what you would have to do then is you would have to basically like move down your time. Uh, you would have to like move a clip down so that it extends the uh, sequence for you. So for example of that, if like they shot way later, you would have to do alt, click, drag, and then you could do this. You could click the clip. And then do plus 10, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that moves the clip down a significant amount. And then you would just do that until you get the time code that you need. If you don't understand that, I'll go over it one more time because it's pretty important. If your cameraman, I'll just undo AO2. I'll take that back out. If your cameraman shoots, so that when you paste your time code, it doesn't go to it. So for example, one more time, let's say he shot at 1743, which would be 543 PM. And it, when you press enter, nothing happens. It's because Premiere can only go forward about 10 minutes. So what you would have to do is you would have to like duplicate a clip by holding down alt, clicking on a clip and dragging it. And then you would have to select that copied clip and then do plus a certain amount of time. So five, five hours I did. So now you can see I have all this extra room. And if I go to the back of it, here's that extra clip. And then you can type in that clip that is at the 17 hour mark. So, you know, it lets me because there is a clip at the end and it was not going to try and close that gap. So I'm just going to delete that. Luckily for us, our AO2 is working. So once again, I'm going to select all my AO2 clips, copy the time code, paste that time code, and paste the clips. So now we've got all of our camera A angles. Um, next, we're going to do BO2. So I'm going to select everything, copy the time code, paste the time code. And then what you can do is you can just move your source records so that they go on the second track of video and the second track of audio. So now you can sort of see this is where we're starting to get like our multicam stuff. So now if I like were to disable the viewer, the uh, track output here, you can see it's the same scene, different camera. We're starting to get something put together. So we're almost done with our sync map here. What we're going to do is I'm going to go to my audio. And we have that one clip at the end, but for now, I'm just going to copy everything like I do before. Copy my time code, paste it here. So I'm just going to, once again, make sure I'm activated on audio three. And I'm just going to disable my video layers. And then now it's down here on the layer. So now we have pretty much everything matching up. Sink, sink in a toilet. toilet. They don't need a lot more now than, when I play this than that. And the way, the way it's laid out now, it's, it's absolutely beautifully off. done and efficient. You guys can hear it's laid it. out. And then our and bathroom is. So what we want to do next step in the time. Oh, I almost forgot. 
we have our uh our C cam that we have to match up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go looking for the scene where our host JD is doing some construction work. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna look for something where he's up in the attic. This might be it. Yeah, this is most likely it. So what I'm gonna do, this is a really typical situation. As you can see here, I'm gonna make this full screen. We have a slate here where there is no like bottom piece with the time code on it. We have an electric one now with a with the time code displayed on it. That helps a lot because when he when he does that, I can just go to that time code that's normally on the slate and just copy that in and then paste the clip with an endpoint. But we don't have either of those. So this is like worst case scenario kind of stuff. So I, I figured it was really good for the lesson um, because this is like as bad as it gets with GoPros. Or technically, like I said before, there could be no slate of any kind and you would have to look for an action to match up to. So I'm just gonna go to where that clicks. Right there. I like to see no motion blur when I'm doing my GoPros. So as soon as the sticks like hit like that, I create an endpoint. I'm gonna unmaximize it. And I'm gonna go through here. And there's the same guy. It looks like he's doing the same thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click and drag just the video. Oh, I have to activate a layer. I'm going to put it onto V3 and I'm just going to move my GoPro clip onto the third layer. So I have my A cam, my B cam on layers one and two, and then my C cam on layer three. So the next step is in our sync map is um, lining up any discrepancies or any uh, anything that's a little bit off. And that's going to be the end of lesson one. And then we're going to move on to day masters and creating multi cams and things. Marker, second six. So, right off the bat, I can hear something is off. So if I go here, I'm just gonna delete this little marker here because it's getting in my way actually. It was nice though, the person actually marked where it went down on the, uh, on the clip. But here's our little peak file for when the slate closes with the audio guy. And then here is where the slate closes in the video. So you can see it's off by about three or four frames. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on my clip and then hold down Alt and use my right arrow keys to line that up as perfectly as I can. So now when I play it back, Second six. it lines up perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, I'm gonna take my luck and show you guys something that I do quite often. Hold on. I'm gonna wait. Okay, it looks like that was just the cameraman rolling by accident or something. It looks like they weren't ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ignore that one. Um, but I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to leave it there just in case. Because all of a sudden a producer walks into the room and says, Hey, where's that clip where the camera's all wonky and they're setting this tub up? And it's like, oh, well, I deleted it. And it's always easier not to delete it than to delete it because all of a sudden you can say, oh yeah, I remember that. It looked like B-roll, I'm sorry, but here it is in the sync map. I'm gonna go here, looks like the same. That's definitely rolling by accident because that's on the camera, camera guy. Now I'm just gonna activate all my tracks so that when I click up and down, I can go to each clip. This clip looks like nothing. Cool. And then go here. And I'm just gonna scrub through. It doesn't look like they're gonna slate it. So like I said, sometimes they just don't slate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for like a little peak, and I already see one here. Here's a little peak, and here's a little peak. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little trick. Chances are when the audio is off by a little bit, it's off by a little bit for every clip. So I'm gonna hold down I'm going to zoom out, I'm going to hold down A, or not hold down, I'm just going to select A, and then I'm going to hold down Shift, and that's going to select just this track. So you'll notice if I leave it, when I hold Shift, the cursor changes, so that's just selecting these tracks, and since these are all linked, when I select one, it selects all the green tracks, all the audio tracks. If I were to not hold down Shift, it would select everything forward, include the video, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to select Shift, I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to... Do the same thing as before. 
I'm going to hold down alt and right until there. And now when I listen to it, <laughs> everything sounds good. So there's probably just something in the background or something. And again, I'm just going through. And now all these audio tracks look good. That doesn't have any audio. That's B-roll. <laughs> just going through. And basically what I do is I just take some time and I just make sure everything's good. Because if I don't check it here, it gets a little checker up. <laughs> it gets a little harder to check later down as you go. So here's, again, the slate. And that's matching up. I think I marked it already in the past. So it looks like everything's pretty much good. So that's pretty much all we have to do for our sync map. And as you can see, based on how much time we've been spend, spending here, it takes quite a bit of time to uh, get this right. And hopefully your GoPros are, you know, set with a slate or something and your B cam and your audio A cam or you're lining up. Um, but it's really important to take the time and really go through everything and make sure it's all good, especially the interviews, because if interviews are off, and you notice all of a sudden it's the last step and you're getting ready to deliver okay. the show Parker, and all of a sudden it. that's off by a little bit. Like for example, there it is. Even though we moved everything down earlier, that slate's off by one frame. It was off by one frame for what we did. So it's really important because you don't want to find out the last step when you're delivering the show that all of a sudden everything's off and you have to go back and do that by hand and line everything up. Take your time, do it slow, practice this lesson a lot. Um, Try and find somebody that has the footage to practice this with. I can't, I don't have the permission to, uh, to give this out. I wish I did, but try and if you don't have something, go out with a friend, shoot some footage with some A camera, B camera and some audio and a C cam and practice this step. This is probably very easily the most important one. So, um, I'll see you guys next time. I hope that you found this lesson helpful. And again, feel free to contact me. I'm, probably a little bit too much free time um, or at least I have enough free time on the train to read some emails and respond crushvisuals at gmail.com crushvisuals.com and again comment below and ask your questions let me know some feedback uh, I hope you guys found this lesson informational helpful and I'll see you guys for the next lesson see ya